thank you all for being with us on this course. We are getting close to the end of this awesome course 102, Understanding Yeshua, Jesus, the Son of Elohim, Son of Man. The sum of all knowledge. How can we be ministers of the gospel? How can we be ambassadors of kingdom if we don't know who our king is? So let nobody think we're too much. This, I mean, today is lesson 17. Just to know our king, our head, it's the sum of all knowledge. So today we're going to study lesson 17, part 2 of the critical issues to consider and which is the necessity of having a proper biblical non-religious understanding of Yeshua Jesus is so important because there's no other way. Heavenly Father, by your spirit, help us to apprehend this truth. Even as you get us closer to the end of this course, that our knowledge will be perfected by your spirit at work through your word. Do it for your name's sake. Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the kingdom cannot be accessed by any other way than the straight gate and the narrow way, which is the divinity and humanity of his central character, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who is very Elohim and very man, very God, very man. No one can get crushed into the kingdom by any other means except through him. There's no window you can use to sneak in. There's no other way. That is why it's important to have a proper biblical understanding of what we've been doing from Genesis through the Old Testament into the New all the way to Revelation, he is presented in this course. Brothers and sisters, it's so important so that we can rest our faith on what the Word says. I know in the course of teaching this course to people in different regions of the world, Asia, Africa, Europe, America, one thing became clear to me. A lot of people, what they know of Yeshua is just based on what they learned in children's Sunday school. The little the length of Jesus then. And there's been no additional content. So most of what people know of him is just based on a vague, vague understanding of a little truth in Paris when we were young. And so men and brothers, it's so important that every believer must make our time to understand who our head is, who our king is, and that is how we can be safe from those who do not believe in his divinity, for instance, when they take their toxic doctrines and sell, we will not be victims of that. Those who reject the divinity of Yeshua are not ready for his return. For, den for to deny his divinity is to deny the basis of that reality. If he was a man, he wouldn't have resurrected from the dead. Neither will he ascend bodily to heaven, neither will he come again. But the reality that he's coming again means that those who deny him who he is, they are at risk of losing the very benefit of eternal life. And so that's why it's important for us to know that if you have come to believe him properly as king, as lord, as God, and as man, then our responsibility towards those who have not, who are believers, who are still vague, is to pray for them to be like little children, to receive with meekness the engrafted word, just like Yeshua talked about Matthew 18. Except not one is like a child you can't receive. It takes faith. It takes simplicity of heart to receive. So that's why Paul prayed in Ephesians 1, 15 to 23, and Colossians 1, 9 to 18, for the Christians at Ephesus and Colossae, that their eyes of understanding will be open to understand the simplicity of the gospel. So, five things make up the central pillars on which the faith and lifestyle of true Christians rests. Number one, we enter the kingdom through the front door, which is simply based on the finished work of Yeshua on the cross as a perfect sacrifice, as a perfect God-man who alone is the bridge between divinity and humanity. It is this revelation of his divinity uttered by Peter when he said, who do you say I am? He said, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. 
And Yeshua told him, Peter, it's not flesh and blood. It's the Lord that revealed it to you. Remember, we are told in John 6, 44 and 65 that, you know what? Nobody can know him except the Father reveals him. So he said, Simon, it's not you. It's, it's the Father that has revealed this to you. And he told him, you are the rock. That revelation is a rock. And upon that rock, he will build his church. Upon the revelation of his divinity, his church is built. The second reality is this. Yeshua and the kingdom are not mutually exclusive, but they are rather mutually inclusive realities. The kingdom is his. In the spiritual dispensation that now is, when he is enthroned in our hearts and also in all that he rules over the kingdom nation and where he is to return again. It is, his, it is he who will descend from heaven the second time in the fullness of glory and power to establish the kingdom. You know, Revelation eleven fifteen says, The seven angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. He will reign over all. Brothers and sisters, the process of his reigning over all is what has been unfolding all through the centuries. And his coming is near, brothers and sisters. We need to begin to live in a heightened state of expectation of his coming. And all the things that you know the enemy is trying to use to distract saints, we must recognize them and steer away from them. Thirdly, the third thing is that the entire life of saints is one that is lived through the grace that is drawn from him, the risen Yeshua, by the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit, as we abide in him, John 15, 1-7, Philippians 1, 6, Philippians 2, 13, it is him who works in us, both to will and to do. And he said, will not leave us alone. Number four, we are fully engaged in seeking first the kingdom, putting the overall strategic interest of the king above our own personal goals. And that's why we engage in the ministry of reconciliation called the Great Commission. You know, Second Corinthians 5, 17 to 21, if anyone is in Yeshua, he's a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. And he says, all things are of Elohim, who has reconciled us to himself by Yeshua HaMashiach and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Every believer has the ministry of reconciliation. People are saying, what is my ministry? What is my ministry? Everybody's ministry, number one, is to be a witness of Yeshua for the purpose of proclaiming what he's done in us to other people that sinners may hear and be saved, be drawn to him through the proclamation of the gospel. And that leads us to number two. Our main assignment is to make disciples of the nation. So sharing the gospel with them that they may be saved is just a part of the process that should culminate in making disciples of people, nations, communities, a people, a person at a time. When one person is made a, a, a disciple, the principle of you know, uh, uh, um, ca you know, catalyzing takes place through one person, a family, through one family, a neighborhood, through a neighborhood, a community, through that, a city. And so making disciples is so important. That's why he gave us Holy Spirit. Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto all the uttermost parts of the earth. And in these last days, brothers and sisters, with social media, various platforms, the Lord wants us to begin to look beyond our immediate environment. Look beyond. You can reach people in China, in, 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 in Russia. You can reach people in Asia, in Africa, anywhere. And have it in mind for that. Then number five, true kingdom citizens realize they are strangers and pilgrims in this present life, which will one day pass away. So they are in earnest expectation of the return of the Lord to stamp out all rebellion and establish the fullness of the kingdom. So in the meanwhile, we are occupying until it comes. We have that framework. What we're doing now, it's going to culminate in when he returns to give the reward. 
And so we realize that First Peter 2, 9 and 10, that we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We're sh supposed to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so we bear this in mind. And so it's not about going to occupy the mountains of society. There's something much more. And that is which is much more is to labor for the kingdom to come. So while waiting for him, we lay our hands on the plow and the things the, things the Lord has ordained for us to do, we do it very well. Men and brethren, it is through his disciples that Yeshua exerts and expands the kingdom mandate where he plants us, you know, in this present lifetime. We are to dispense his presence and power where we live, where we walk, and where we have influence. It is the earnest expectation of the creation that such disciples emerge and show the way to Yeshua, to Elohim as possessors rather than mere professors of the kingdom. And so one central assignment of present those who are in him is to deliver us from self-imposed religious limitations and the deadly poison of doctrines of devils that are going to be so prevalent in this time. Doctrines of devils, all of them are designed to make Christians to miss the way. The reason and glorify Yeshua is the head of the church, which is his body. He's also the chief cornerstone of the church. This is because the church is not a building. The church is not a denomination. In fact, denominations divide the church. Denominations are inherently toxic in the sense that they put people into camps around men and creating cult personalities, whereas all of us are supposed to be, you know, led to him and him alone. So the church is the totality of the redeemed, all who are redeemed by the blood from all races, from all kindreds, from all tongues. As Ephesians 2, 19 to 22 says, and Ephesians 5, 23 to 30, 27 says, and Colossians 1, 9 to 18. And as the head of all principality and power, Yeshua assures all who are his that everything, including satanic activities against them, including, you know, attacks of the enemy, everything will work together ultimately for the good of the remnant. That is the essence of Romans 8, 28 to 39. So we need to walk in understanding the present spiritual phase of the kingdom where the king is in our heart, where is in our heart, dwelling in our heart, we yield to him completely, he rules us from within, our heart is his throne. When we understand that when he is exercising sovereign rule, the kingdom is within us. And the Lord said to us as proof, he says in First John chapter 2, 15 to 17, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any love the world, the love of Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away. So it is important to know that when you love the world, you are actually living the security of life under Yeshua to go to the life where the king, the, the God of this world, Satan, is ruling. And it's so important that we understand that we are not called to churchianity, especially ABC churchianity, where it's about attendance, building cash. That's not what we are called to. We are not called to membership of denominations. We are not called to submit to the whims and caprices of men we call clergy who claim superior standing. Those who qualify as kingdom citizens are those who have denied self, taken up their own bespoke crosses. My cross is different from yours. May, it may intersect in a number of things, but you have your own bespoke cross. When it comes your way, don't deny it. Embrace it. Take up your cross. Follow him. The intercession of the will of Elohim and your will. When they intersect, there's a cross right there. When you suffer anything for his sake, for sake of integrity, people lie against you, speak evil against you, people plot against you, do all kinds of things, and you guard your heart. You do not allow it to destabilize you. There's a cross right there. And there are many other things. You labor for people, and they pay you back. Negativity, that's a cross right there. 
So we need to make sure that when the occasion of the cross comes, we don't complain, we don't get offended, we don't get angry. We commit everything to him that judges righteously. We trust him. He will take us away from all the negativities. That's why the death of self is so important. When he says in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Yeshua, nevertheless I live, yet not I. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of Elohim, who loved me and gave himself for me. When you are dead to self, many things that destroy people cannot destroy you because you can handle anything. You can handle evil speaking. You can handle rejection. You can handle ingratitude. You can handle them when you are dead to self. But if you are not dead to self, each of those things can crush you. And that's why we need to make sure that the yoke of Yeshua is a liberating yoke. It's not a yoke of bondage. It delivers from anxiety, from worry, from the cares of this life, as Matthew 6, 25 to 34 says, and Matthew 11, 28 to 32 says, and 1 Peter 5, 7, we cast all our care upon him. And that means you have been translated from mere believer, not because of spiritual action, but because you have received the grace to lay aside your own human wisdom and put your whole trust in Yahweh and his written words. Ben and brother, it doesn't mean that disciples are now sinless. No, it simply means you will no longer intentionally decide to sin against Elohim. But you can make mistakes. You can stumble. You can stumble. But you know what? When the stumbling happens, you know something, you fall forward into the hand of Elohim. You don't run away from him. You don't be like Adam who ran into the bush. No, you fall forward into him. First John 2 says, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua the righteous, and is a propitiation for our sins. The pool of the blood is still flowing. If you take a dive, it will purge, it will cleanse, and then he will not only forgive, he will justify, meaning he will wipe off every record of that sin. That's what Micah 1, 18 to 19 says, and 1 John chapter 1, uh, 1 to 9, and the one we just read. He blots out. That's what his grace does. His grace gives you a lively conscience. You tremble at the word of Elohim. You ever conscious of his omniscience and omnipresent. That's why you love righteousness, hate iniquity. Sin does not have dominion over you. It doesn't have dominion over you. And so, men and brethren, in this church age, the Lord is calling us to come to that place where we will know that those disciples that were first called Christians at Antioch, Acts 11, 26, they called them as a nickname. They look at them, the way they lived, just like their king, Yeshua. And they look at them and say, that man, they are Christ-like. They are little Christ. Brothers and sisters, let it be what people will say of us in this day and age. Let it be what people will say in this day and age that we are like our master. That is the greatest. Our master didn't intermingle with the world system. He interacted. He wasn't isolated, but he didn't intermingle. He didn't allow the world to dominate his consciousness and his mindset. And his whole life was about submitting to the will of the Father. Brothers and sisters, I all you in the name of the Lord, let's trust him. He's all about his grace. None of these things is by our ability, by our strength. But once our desire is in him and we are wholly, completely yielded to him and we allow him you know, to take us to the place where we die to self, his grace begins to flow through us. Brothers and sisters, that is the blessed life. With this type of life, you know what? At the end of the day, his grace is is sufficient for us in all areas. You know, there are one or two more lessons left, and we're going to be through with this course, and then we'll take the course impact assessment. Let's pray. Remember, brothers, before we pray, please share this video. Share it extensively. Let people get to know. Let each lesson, there's something added. Each lesson, each something is added. Let's make sure that we share it and enable people to receive. After the prayer, make an announcement. Heavenly Father, by your spirit, we submit to you. Do what you want to do to bring us to that place where we are your disciples, dependable disciples you can use to do what you ought to do in our time, in our day, in our season. Have your way by your spirit and take perfect control in Yeshua's name.
Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same of Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.